Net Worth Nation, good afternoon. Today is Financial Friday, Financial Friday with the Nation Net Worth. Here we go. Just want to kind of welcome out and reach out and speak out and talk to all of our graduates that are coming up for the class of 2023. Just so super excited uh, about what's coming down the pipe for you guys. And um, I really wanted to kind of dedicate today's segment to to my guys. Um, And you guys know who you are. Big shout outs uh, to Tyrus. Big shout outs to Azan. Uh, Just just, uh, so super excited uh, about the young men you guys uh, growing up to become. And um, I hope to have you guys eventually on the show, um, on the podcast. I'm going to be doing a special segment over the next uh, several weeks. I'm going to be bringing in uh, an audience of absolute, I I call them absolute winners, uh, of people who uh, really um, magnify, you know, what this network and what this channel has been all about since we've been kind of uh, really rolling here over the last year or so and a few of the things that uh, stand out and come to mind uh, is really reaching out to our young stars who are heading out and heading up uh, out into the world and so uh, one of the things that we have to do and now we always talk about it takes a village uh, but it it truly does does take a village and we want to make sure that We are supporting our young people the way we're supposed to. We're being accountable to them. We're being here for them that no matter what day or time it is um, and that phone rings, um, we need to answer it. Right, guys? And I don't mean just, hey, hello. We need to be answering it with wisdom, with love, with care and concern. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into today's material, as you already see. We're going back to school for some of us and some of us that may have already been through school, right? So why financial literacy and why now, right? So, well, why not now, right? And so you guys are embarking on probably, well, like I said earlier, one of the more exciting times of life. And like we said, when rubber meets the road, it gets to a point where you get to to put all the information and everything that you've been learning into effect so that you can absolutely begin to really um, expand and build on the knowledge that you've been taught up to this point in life. Now, so I'm not letting any of my people off the hook because you have Uncle Ron here on the Net Worth Nation channel who's absolutely given the build, right? The super build. And so I'm giving you guys everything you need to continue further. So for those of you who, like myself, did not come out of a household with a lot of financial literacy taught, nah, I'm not going to let you wait till you're 40, 44, 42, 43, like I was, right? Um, early, you know, whatever. I'm going to have you guys get it now, right? So the things that I'm going to be sharing with you over the next several weeks, if you guys can absolutely put it in your repertoire, I'm trying to tell you, you can be special. So financial literacy 101, what it is and what it isn't, right? We want to talk about it for real, for real, um, and really go into it. And one of the first things we want to make sure um, is that we understand what exactly it's not, all right? And so we'll talk about what it isn't, right? Meaning that it's not one plus one and two plus two, guys, right? It isn't the things that we were learning in middle school, well back when you guys was in first and second grade, right? I mean, you guys are high school guys, so you're on your way, right? But you remember those days, man, you know, the spitballs and all that stuff that was happening, the slaps on the back of the head. And you was learning this type of math. That, that wasn't financial literacy. And even when you got up to fourth or fifth grade and you started learning your uh, geographical, geographic shapes, circles, sizes, you know, your corners and squares and all that, that wasn't it either. That wasn't it either, you know? And then we definitely know it's not rocket scientist type stuff. It's not, you know, it's not 
rocket science. It's not that complicated. Although, I will say, once we get this, you will feel like you have sailed from the stratosphere, you know, like a rocket ship. But <clears throat> nevertheless, it's not that. What is it? It's the fundamental understanding of what an asset and what a liability is. Once again, that fundamental understanding. That's all it really is. It's not a whole uh, complex thing. You guys have done the most you'll ever need to know as far as your mathematical education. Okay, you high school grads coming up in a couple of weeks, some of you next week. Um, you got it all. But what I want to make sure you get is this. All right, so let's talk about the ultimate conversation of what an asset looks like. See, an asset looks like something that's going to add value um, today or maybe can add value tomorrow. So for my young sports junkies, who um, I'm sure you can relate, a um, couple things happened when Kobe passed away. I went out and purchased the uh, Sports Illustrated um, special that they had on him on the cover. Uh, of course, we all went out and got the 2K, right, with him, the Legacy Edition with him on the cover. And I think I paid like $79, $89. I thought that was pretty pricey. <coughs> Excuse me, the magazine was pretty pricey. But the person who understands the basics of assets know that there's a good chance that 10 years from now, in 2030, those two products that were considered uh, special edition and uh, legacy edition items have a potential in 10 years to have added value, right? In other words, they may be well worth more than the $79 that they were when we first bought them, right, in the magazine. So why do you need to understand that? Because that changes the whole dynamic of the way you spend money, right? So, you know, am I banking on it that Kobe's edition is going to be worth more than it is when I bought it? Oh, yeah. They're already celebrating every year in the NBA when he passes away. And they're even looking to add his name to some of the uh, awards and stuff. So you kind of get where I'm going with this. Another thing that's an asset is something that offsets an expense. So real quick, um, not long ago, I used to... Um, uh, make a few bucks on the uh, Toru platform. If you're, those of you not aware of Toru, it's a platform where you, you know, you take your car and you know you shine it up, clean it up, um, basically dust it off, and you put it out there uh, as a tool for people who are either flying in or in town, or even you guys. You guys got graduations coming up, right? So, hey Toru, giving you a plug on my net worth my channel, but you can absolutely go to Turo. I don't know if you guys have age restrictions or not. Some of you guys are 17, 18. But anyway, you go there and you're able to rent. Basically, I call them exotic cars because to be honest with you, you know, you go to Enterprise and it hurts. They have nice cars, you know, but you're not getting a Spider. <laughs> you're not getting a Porsche. You're not getting a vet. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So, or tricked out uh, Jeep or anything like that. So let's be realistic. Toro is that, is that play, right? But anyway, um, whoever's on that platform is absolutely offsetting their expenses because they know that those cars they have, they have to pay car notes. But a weekend car rental to a graduating class of 2023, you know, if that car goes out two or three nights, you know, for the next two, three weeks, because graduations are staggered. Now that person has made some income. It's offset the expense. Another thing is anything in your repertoire that lowers your debts, you know, that's an asset. Anything in your repertoire that lowers your debts, that's an asset. Could be your job, you know, anything like that that lowers your debts. Um, things that are liquid. And I'm not talking about drinks, <laughs> not talking about water. Liquid is a terminology that you're going to get comfortable with, you know, in financial literacy, right? So liquid, meaning how can I transfer this item 
into cash so that I can go out and do what I need to do or Bitcoin currency. So we're all speaking of today's date in 2023. So, uh, or a cash app or something that I can turn liquid, right? And then last but not least, anything that gives you somewhat of a financial leverage by it being in your repertoire, right? Something in your repertoire that gives you a financial leverage. It, it could be your vehicle. It could be your home. It could be, you know, the uh, watch collections uh, that you have or the gold collection that you have or the gaming collection that you have. It could be. It could be the baseball cards uh, for my girls. It could be the jewelry. It could be, you know, your nail collection. Who knows? So those assets are things that we look at and we have to recognize what they are because there's a difference between assets and liabilities. Liabilities now, on the other hand, you know, um, oh, before I go there, I'm sorry. And things that open up the doors of opportunity. That's another thing an asset can be something that can open up the door of opportunity, like your ability to speak, your ability to just be personable could open up the door of opportunities for you, right? Like you young people graduating, you got good personalities, good charisma. You're not afraid to open up your mouth and talk like some of you that I know personally are very good. <clears throat> Who knows? Hey, man, that's a good young woman, nice young lady, nice young man. Hey, we got something going. So it opens up the door of opportunities because you just know how to use that asset and it becomes a gift for you as well. Now, liabilities, not so much. Liabilities are things that really depreciate. If anybody doesn't understand the term depreciate, we know what appreciate means appreciate that's to add value depreciate is to devalue so anything that devalues at a rapid rate <clears throat> is not good that's a liability so i know a lot of us you know me included we love cars we love them we love them we love them um we love clothes we love them we love them we love them but you know a lot of us we look in our closets and, and, and we have clothing collections from baseball caps, all types of things. And those things do not necessarily carry value. It is what it is. That vehicle, as beautiful as it is, as dope as it is, once you drive it off the lot, guys, sorry to tell you, you know, it's only valuable to you, you know? Another thing, things that drain you financially. I mean, let's stay right here. Let's talk about the vehicle. Right. So not only do we look at vehicles as depreciated, but what about my guys out there who, like I was, who had to have one of the luxury cars? I remember the BMW that I bought. You couldn't tell me nothing. It was a 745. It was phenomenal, beautiful wood grain. For those of you who know, it was phenomenal. And I love driving that car. I thought I was in the top of the world until I took it in to have its first oil change. You see what I'm saying? So the reality was because it was a high-end car, the oil changes were more expensive. The repairs were more expensive. The tires were more expensive. The brakes were more expensive. Even the gas that I put in it was more expensive. You see what I'm saying? So that car, as much as I loved it, it was a drain to me financially. Sorry, guys, I don't mean to be picking on cars, but they just fit these things so easy, so well. And then the draining things that drain you, you, you physically and mentally, you know, um, I know this is not going to sound right, but there's a lot of us that work on going to professions where we work like jobs that, you know, we think are great jobs because we look at the, uh, the pay rate. But when we get in there, and we're working those type of those jobs and we realize, well, this might not be for me. Then that job can become stressful, can start to wear on you physically, wear on you mental. You know, that's why I always say you guys are coming out. You have the world in front of you. And that is no pun intended. You do. But choose your care, your, you know, your careers carefully. Everybody's not cut out to be a firefighter. Everybody's not, everybody's not cut out to be a, a, a um 
a, a police officer. You know what I mean? Everybody's not cut out to work in EMT, you know, emergency services, you know. Remember, those were the guys that were running towards the burning buildings, not away. So I'm not saying those jobs are not for you, but they could be for you, but make sure you know what's for you, right? And what's not for you, right? And then things that kind of tie the money up, you got to watch that. Like things that tie up your money, that's a liability, you know, because if the money is tied up in certain types of investments, it's tied up, that means you don't have it, you know? So choose what you put your money in, you know, carefully, how liquid is it? Like we said on the other side, you know, I mean, it's okay to wait maybe a year or so, <clears throat> excuse me, but if your money's tied up for two, three, four, five years, that's not helping you, right? And then things that tie up your time, things that tie up your time. I think the thing that comes to me also are, are, are high paying jobs that cause you to have to work, you know, a lot of long hours, weekends, overtime, things like that. Now, those things are not bad. Don't get me wrong, but you have to be aware of things that are tying up your time so much so that you're not productive in any other areas of your life. So guys, you just want to make sure you understand what that balance is. And you don't want to get that 25 years from now, guys. So I know I'm talking to my graduating class of 2023, and I know I'm talking to you a little bit strong because it's necessary, right, guys and girls? Because we're here. We we have arrived. So we're going to have these types of take the Band-Aid off conversations with you guys. And of course, we got to go for the health, things that attack the health, right? So again, all this has everything to do with what a liability is. And I know I've looked at it from the mind. I've looked at it from the body, the health. Any of these things can become liabilities, all right? If you don't know, just ask the average 40, 50-year-old person who's been taking medications and who's stressed out, who's worked in fields for years and years and years, and they're beat down. So Again, Uncle Ron is going to tell it like it is, guys. I'm not going to glorify any position unless I know you guys, my nieces and nephews out there, okay, are built for it and are prepared for it and organically can go into those jobs without no problems whatsoever, then I'm going to push it for you. So there's your financial literacy as it comes to that. So, guys, I know a few slides back, I played it around and showed you the math. One plus one is two and all that. But what is the math that we absolutely really need to know if we're going to grow and be financial literate? Right. Addition, subtraction, decimals, percentages. See, this is the math that we want to become very, very familiar with. Again, decimals, percentages, you know. Uh, addition and subtraction, right? Because we want to know what's adding to our bottom line, right? We want to know what's taken away from our bottom line, right? So, yep, addition and subtraction, right? And always remember, the most financially literate community clearly understands the mathematics behind these formulas. They absolutely, absolutely do, right? So we talked about percentages. Another best friend, mathematical friend of financial literate people is compound interest, Compound interest, learn it, understand that. Why? Because most of you guys that I'm talking to, 17, 18, 19 years of age, and if you understand compound interest, then most of you, if you understand this, by the time you turn, let's see, 17, 18, 19, by the time you turn 28, 29, and 30, most of you, will be sitting on assets that would make a lot of us jealous if you understand this because you guys would know how to leverage your youth with time to build your assets and your resources. So that's why Uncle Ron is really talking to you now, right? Because I assure you, all of us, your parents, your uncles, I'm your financial uncle, but your 
biological uncles, they will all tell you they wish they had have known this when they came out of high school. But they will all say unanimously, no one shared this with me. It said maybe that crazy uncle or that crazy aunt, you know, there's always one person somewhere, a friend of the families. But for the most part, the core family members, no one sat them down and talked about it. So two formulas, the formula on the left, many of you guys, if you don't he take heed to this message, will most likely end up on this side of the page. And that's why I'm doing this, because we don't want to end up on this side. This is hard, physical, mentally taxing, emotionally taxing labor that produces pretty much, you know, this. And on the right hand side, someone is final true literate and understands that they should not be working harder than their money understands the power of compound interest, says that, no, I'm going to be working hard. Now, you see the guy is obviously dressed for work and he's working. But his money is working two, three, sometimes four times harder than he is because somebody in his circle gave him the play and he ran with it. That's the only difference between this guy and these folks over here. The play was given, one group ran, the other ran away from it. And so we don't want to be on this side. A lot of us who've been on this side are crossing over. We're crossing over, right? But what are we talking to now? We're talking to you guys because we don't even want you to go through this. We, we try to get you to skip that. And if you do play around on this side, we want you to play around it on a very, very little, maybe three, four, five years, just so you can get a taste so you can appreciate, you know, this side. So again, financial literacy, the page behind us shows how wealthy people work. They work more like the gentleman with the dollars are flowing around because they understand that they have to work, right? We know, of course, the Bible says we must work, right? But if we're going to work, we got to work strategically. So people on that side, they understand what commissions are. They understand what the percentages are. They understand what residual is. They understand that mathematics and how they implement that into their work structure, right? So they're like, okay, I got to work. I got to work, okay? But if I'm going to work, I want to get a cut. If I'm going to work, I want to get a commission. If I'm going to work, you know, I want to get a deal. So let's stay right there since we talk about sports and different things, but, you know, all right, my females, I can't leave y'all hanging out there. So we all know Rihanna when we've, we've, we've admired her music. Some of us, except for Stephen A. Smith, I guess, but anyway, it's neither here nor there, but Rihanna understood the concept of commission and residual. Now, while she's working and she's singing and she's performing and she's dancing and she's doing all the, the work that you know, technically you see on this page here, she falls in this side because her cosmetic line, every time it sells in Macy's and all these high-end stores, she gets a commission off of every sale, right? Her name has value. And whenever something is selling, she gets a commission. So why does she fall on this side? Because when Rihanna is performing in concert, she's getting paid. When Rihanna makes a song, she's getting paid. And when Rihanna is not making any music, she's still getting paid. And that's why her numbers are a little more like this. Now, believe it or not, she works hard, right? I've seen her. I've seen her story. I've seen everything she's done to put into getting where she is. So I'm never going to tell you don't work hard. The problem is if you must work hard, remember your money must always work harder. Okay. Got it. Got it. So financial literacy guys, as we wrap it up, it starts and it ends with who? With you. I'm Ron G, Uncle Ron, a.k.a. your console. Guys, get with me. Talk to me soon. 
I hope to be there with you. Graduation class of 2023. We here. We standing. We strong. We out. Peace.